Praise the Lord. My subject this morning is from verse 23. Lord, are there few who are saved? It was a question that Jesus was asked. Are there few who are saved? Or we can put it this way. Are there going to be few people that will be saved? It is a question that everybody should ask. Am I going to be saved? Will I make heaven? You have heard and read that Jesus said, What shall it profit a man? To now there's nothing wrong Lord. about prosperity message. Everybody wants to prosper. This ministry believes in you fulfilling your destiny. And there's nothing wrong about the message of deliverance because truly there is an enemy called Satan. But more than those messages is the message of salvation that we must not mix. Because after binding all the demons and casting them into hell, it will be disastrous for anybody to join them in hell. All the witches you have prayed against, you shouldn't share the same accommodation in hell. And you can't talk about prosperity with, but, and leave the word of salvation. Because after you have made all the money, when you die, you will leave every, everything behind. So this question is a very, very important question. Lord, are there few who are saved? Then Jesus said, strive to enter. I was checking the meaning of strive. It means that you make great efforts to achieve something. Great effort to achieve something. So what Jesus was saying, in other words, is, Sir, make great effort to enter heaven. Make great effort to enter the narrow gate. Another definition of stress is, struggle or fight vigorously. This thing is important. It's not how some people talk about it. Amen. So Jesus Say something again. He said, many will seek to enter and not be able. And I underlined that in my Bible. Many will seek to enter. Look at verse 24 there. I say to you, many will seek to enter and will not be able. So those who are seeking to enter, perhaps are the people that have heard about the gospel. They know about God. They know about heaven. They want to enter the kingdom. Jesus said they will not be able to. They will not be able to. And this is something that everybody needs to really think about. Why won't they? Why won't I? We are in the church. We are in the Bible. We pray because we want to make heaven. We love God. We know God. And when you begin to pursue money, Jesus said those words. It is going to be hard. For the rich. Those who worship money. Those who have uncontrolled appetite for riches. For money. Then they have made money their new God. And I'm telling you this from the pulpit to the pews. Everybody must watch it. Even pastors. Because today. One of the parameters to measure success. Especially in ministry. Is the amount of money you control as a pastor. Or, or the, the size of your congregation. Or probably your invitations and anointing. But all those things don't move God. We men, human beings, we celebrate that. There are people that have names here on earth. But they are not known in heaven. We celebrate them here on earth. They are the papa and the mama and the pope and everything. We almost even worship. But heaven has no record of them. They want to enter. But they can't enter. And part of why they can't enter, I believe the Holy Spirit will help me to share a few with us today so that all of us can check ourselves. I was telling some people during the week, I said, if Jesus will not come in our lifetime, something is sure to come. Death. We are going to die. And if we die, we cross over to the other side. A point of no return. When we die, we cross that line. I've been thinking, since I gave my life, one of the things that really touched me is I don't want to burn in hell. 
I, I said to somebody yesterday, I said, if you are in your own house and somebody locked the door and took the key away, in your own house, you can sleep on your bed, you can eat any food in your house, but the person said you are not coming out of this house for three days in your own house. I tell you before the end of the first day, you will be so bored you want to get out. Second day, third day. And can you imagine the suffering? Before a day goes by 24 solid hours. The next day, before a week ends, not to talk of one month, two months, one year, two years, three years, ten years, 20,000 years, 300,000 years, 700,000 years, one million years, and eternity has not even started. Because there's no end to it. Why will I allow this life to deny me? Every one of us needs to check ourselves, including me. Because it is so trickish. It is so easy for the devil to change our focus. What does not matter becomes the main issue of our lives. We begin to chase shadow everywhere. Nobody can finish it. Life is like a shadow. You can never cash up. You can't exhaust it. You will only spend your own time and go away. And generations after us will continue. But when you go away, where are you going? Are there many that will be saved? Because if you have not settled with salvation, the whole, the whole life is wasted. It shouldn't be that anybody will beg us to forgive. Part of the reason why people will not enter the kingdom is people who hold on to unforgiveness. If you will not forgive, the scripture says, your own sin will not be forgiven you. And if your sins remain, there is no chance for you to enter this place we call heaven. Because you see, God will not allow anybody to bring impurity into his presence. And sin is one of the impurities that is not going to be allowed in heaven. It doesn't matter how much God loves us. If we don't accept Christ and change our lives. If you think about punishment in hell, there is no offense in this present life that should be so big, so important, so painful that you say, no, I'm not going to forgive. And you risk spending the rest of your eternal life in suffering. God forbid it. Nothing should be so big and nothing should be so sweet that the flesh covets so much. That you, you abandon God and you pursue the things of this life, this world. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, reading from verse 15 to 17. Love not the world, nor the things in the world. And he goes on to give us the list of the things in the world. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. That will be a teaching for another day. But Jesus Christ said, it is hard. Those who live in unforgiveness, those who live in sin adultery fornication pornography and all the rest if you are a liar there are christians that lie and they don't care anymore lie has become their first nature they talk every word they say when they say five things three and a half a is, child is of lie. must not tell lies we have to watch all these things every little little thing the fear i have is that the world has gone into a level where what we should be afraid of we're not afraid of them anymore it's like it's not God will understand. It's not a big deal. I'm just being smart. But I pray that our smartness will not rob us of heaven in Jesus' name. So Jesus continued in verse 25. Once the master shut the door. And I put in my note here that it will be too Nobody late. Nobody can open that door when he shut the door. In the book of Genesis chapter 7, we read... From verse 15 to 16, talking about the time of Noah when they entered the ark. From verse 15, the Bible says, And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, of all flesh in which is the breath of life. Verse 16, So those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded them. And the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut him in. God allowed Noah to bring animals, but God did not allow Noah to lock the door. God took it upon himself to lock the door. The Lord shut him in. 
The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 7, that he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. If God shut the door, nobody can open it. In Matthew 25, we read about the ten virgins. Jesus gave the parable and he said when the bride and the groom entered, the door was shut. And everybody who came after the door was shut were not allowed in. You see, the door of heaven is still open. Salvation is still available. People should come to the Lord. But a time is coming when that opportunity, that privilege will be taken away. The door is shut. Jesus said, once the master, when once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, he is still sitting now. He has no reason yet. But immediately the master rises up. He is about to shut the door. It is not too late. One of my greatest fears is that unconsciously, we can all drift away from the real thing. Because of the cares of this world. The cares of this life. Because we want to make it. We want to be rich. We want to be famous. We want to have this. I'm telling you, even from the pulpit pastors, there is competition in the body of Christ. There are pastors that are competing with other pastors because they want their church to be big. And I'm saying it's not your church. It is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. But when you say it's my church, sit as if it is yours. And you begin to see yourself in competition with another pastor, another ministry. And the devil is enjoying it. The body of Christ is divided. Jesus said, he warned us that a kingdom that is divided against itself cannot stand. So the devil enjoys it when we begin to compete. The reason why I say all the time that all I want to do is for the kingdom. It's not competition for me. I'm only here for a short time. Maybe 100 years if God blesses me, I spend 100 praise God. But I'm going to die one day. That's the reality that I have to accept. So if I embrace everything now, unfortunately I can't keep it forever. I'm a fool. What you can't keep forever, don't keep at all. Hold on to God. Jesus Christ said, let your treasure be where your heart will be. In John chapter 14 verse 1, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Except if you are not going to heaven. He had prepared a place already. Why would you allow the devil or the temporary things of this world to rob you of eternity? A dear few that will be saved. Jesus said, don't worry about how many people will be saved. You just strive to enter. The gate is indeed narrow. It is a narrow gate. It is a narrow gate. And as I put in my notes, it is narrow because everybody will enter it one by one. Verse 25. When once the master of the house has risen up and sh you Remember this door has been opened all this time. You did not enter. We've been begging you, please give your life to Jesus. You'll be hearing the sermons, you'll be hearing everything. Seek the kingdom first. Leave fornication to leave fornication alone. Your body begins to tingle again. And you call and you, you do it again. Adultery. Your wife or your husband does not satisfy you. The door, the door is still open. It's still open, but not forever. It will be shut one day. Jesus says, saying, Lord, Lord, when they begin to knock, they knock on that door because they know the door. They know that they should be saved. They know this is the way. They just don't care in a way. I still have some time. I will do it tomorrow. I will do it next year. I will change next year. I will forgive next year. I am going to begin to serve next year. Next year. But you don't have any guarantee of tomorrow. We don't know when Jesus will come. If Jesus will not even come now, what about your life? Nobody prays to die. But when death comes, you have no choice. You can't question the one who created you. Amen. The door is still open. He said, when they get there, they begin to say, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he will answer and say to, to you, I do not know you where you May are that from. never be our portion in Jesus' name. They call him Lord, Lord. In Luke chapter 6, verse 46, he said, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? These people, they know him as the Lord. But they never, 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 never listen to him. They never, never, never obeyed him. How can you call him Lord? Jesus was asking the question, why did you call me Lord? The Lord is the one you submit to. He's the owner of your life. 
That was why Sarah was calling Abraham, my Lord. The owner, the owner of my head. My Lord, the Lord is the one you Many people don't to. have problem calling Jesus Christ their Savior. Well, it's my Savior, the sacrificial lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. It's not difficult. What they cannot give Jesus to be in charge of is the control of their lives. To be their Lord. Sit down, sit down. Stand up, stand up. Many people still want to be their own Lord. Controlling their own lives. Doing their own thing. According to how they want it. And if he's not your Lord, he's not complete. He can't be your Savior alone. He has to be too. It is either 100% or nothing. Amen. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, Jesus Christ said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Pause a minute. Let's, let's think about that. Not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord. There are people that are calling him Lord, Lord now. So he's saying... Not everybody will enter that kingdom. So in other words, don't be deceived. Don't go by what they say. I know their heart. Their mouth may be closed, but their hearts are far from me. They are workers of iniquity doing their own thing. Not everybody, everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does... The will of my father in heaven it is about doing not about hearing or saying people say it but they don't do it many will say to me in that day verse 22 lord lord have we not prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name these are not mere people they are not just christian they are even workers they are pastors prophets did we not prophesy Prophets prophesy. We cast out demons. We are miracle workers. Sir. As they were knocking. Sir. We prophesy in your name, sir. Well. We cast out demons in your name. Now think about it. How can the people that prophesy in the name of the Lord. Cast out demons in the name of the Lord. Be rejected. It's a serious matter. These people knew God. In his name. But you know what? They are people who have commercialized the name of Jesus. They use it to make money. And he allows them. Miracle will still be happening when they call the name. For his name's sake, he will answer the prayer. But the vessel has been rejected. For his name's sake. Because they mention his name, he will answer them. So if you go by the miracle and signs and wonders, you are being deceived. Because I'm telling you, those who follow miracle signs and wonders, they may follow it. It's like a bait that can lead the Lord to hell. The Bible says, examine, test every spirit. Magicians can perform miracles. Moses before Pharaoh dropped his staff. Pharaoh called his magician. They dropped their staff. His staff turned to snake. Their staff turned to snake. It's not a big deal. But one is better than another because Moses' staff swallowed their own. God's power is always superior. But the manifestation may be the same many times. God can raise the dead. Some people can perform magic and raise the dead. But one is eternal, one is good, the other is not. Some people, those who go by sign, they can go to anywhere. As long as they see sign, what amazes them? They think it's right. It's not can right. Can I tell you, Church of God, there will be so many surprises that morning when the saints are gathered in the presence of the Lord. And everybody begins to look at their record. You will shout and say, Prophet. So you were doing all of this and we didn't know. There are things we call anointing that are not anointing. Because it's everything. That one day, everything will be clear. Let me say something. Those who are standing for the truth in this present age, they're in the minority. The world does not celebrate truth anymore. If you lie, you get, you get I'm bad. I'm telling you, there are people who started church not because God called them. But because they call themselves. There are people who have been with the Lord for so long and they are bearing no fruit today. They, have, they are born again several years ago. But when God checks their lives, they are like that barren fig tree that was producing no fruit. And the master said, let's cut it down. But there was a plead for one more year. Sir, let's not cut it down. Let me cultivate around it. And the master said, okay. Let's watch for another year. 
Many of us were still enjoying that grace of another year. It is better for us not to waste that grace. Because the same sun that melted the wax also hardened the clay. It is the same sun. The same God who shows love. He also has judgment. That's why he Luke has chapter 13 verse 27. He said, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. May that not happen to us in Jesus' name. Weeping and gnashing. I tried to check those two words. Weeping because they will be sorrowful. Ah! Had I known. I said to somebody, I said on the judgment day, there will be too many had I known. People saying, if I had known, I would have let go. I would have forgiven that sister. I would have forgiven that brother. I would have forgiven my wife. I would have forgiven my husband. I would have forgiven my son or my daughter. Or my sister or my brother. My pastor. My pastor's wife. My boss at work. My colleagues. Or I would have loved even more. I would have been available when there was need in the house of the Lord. I would not be so safe in thinking it was all about me. I would have offered myself there to be useful to the Lord. There are some people that are at the forefront today. But they may not be at the forefront on that day. And there are some people who are at the back today. But they will be at the forefront that day. An example is the thief on the cross with Jesus. That thief on the cross... Got an assurance. I may not know how many people are in, in paradise today, but I know that one. And can you imagine how many atrocities, how many things he had done? He, he probably was never in the church. He never joined the choir, the prayer team, the evangelism team. He didn't even know the way to the church. He was a hoodlum, a, a criminal all his life. But at, on the cross, a few minutes ago, he received mercy. He did something. He said, keep quiet. Why are you accusing this man? We are being punished for what we have done. But he has committed no sin. He rebuked his friend, his co-criminal. And he said to Jesus, Lord, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. He agreed that he is the Lord. The word remember me when you come into your kingdom is about savior. The word remember means don't forget me, sir. You are my savior, my Lord, and my savior. He confessed Jesus on the cross. He admitted to his sins. That admission, because God saw his heart, he was sorry that he was committing sin. And his remorse on the cross told the Lord that this person is sorry, is repenting. And he cried for help. Lord, remember me. I don't want to miss heaven. How can that person who had made a lot of children orphans, a lot of women uh, widow, a lot of men widow, how many people has he killed? How many people had he defrauded? On the cross, he did the right thing. He entered heaven. Me that is preaching, me that has, I have forsaken so many things. Deny my flesh. There are things you would like to do. Go to the club, enjoy your life, but there are certain things that you just don't want to do because you are a believer. You deny the flesh. And at the end of the day, because of certain hidden sins that you failed to let go, because you won't come to this Jesus, you are asked to depart into eternity. May that never be our portion in the Jesus The question name. I want us to ask ourselves before we go today, among the few that will be saved, am I one? And the door is still open. Please talk to God. Talk to your creator. Tomorrow may be too late. Any assurance of the next hour, the next minute, the trumpet can sound anytime. It could be this moment. The trumpet can sound anytime. Before it is too late, and all the cares of this world will no longer matter. Every pursuit of life will suddenly vanish away. We can still make it right. Please, if you want to make a decision for the Lord, come Don't quickly, please. 
If you are here, you just want to straighten your way. Come quickly.